Welcome back, my little friends, to what might be called hangover day, because typically I could drink during an Apple keynote, and uh, the so, fact that it's 11 a.m. I just noticed I'm bleeding. Sorry. That's how that's how aggressive Paul was tweeting. He's actually bleeding. Mm -hmm. I do this for you. Yeah, not for actually, me. Actually, I have to say, I think we were both kind of on fire today. <laughs> this is this is peak <laughs> you know? Apple. Like, yeah. th this is peak Apple. Uh, their iPhone events, you know, it's fun to make fun of them at an iPhone event because you already know those things are going to sell tens of millions. But th today, I feel like they pushed the envelope a little further, and uh, the crowd, I feel like, needed to be maced. Oh um, my god, they were. I know. They were a little too aggressive with the applause. We know that Apple puts their own employees in there, but I feel like I actually I wonder if this time so it could have been local employees, right? Yes, Which would make a little bit of sense. Those guys are used to cheering. Mm -hmm. um, they also held it at kind of a an art college of some kind. And I could yeah. imagine they allowed a certain number of students in, and, and they were warned to be enthusiastic, which mm -hmm. of course young people can be. So I'm sure there was some of that as well. But I, I find. I've always found that disturbing. Uh, it's a press event, guys. You know, they're yeah. announcing products that, by the way, are really expensive. You know, not changing the world. You know, they're evolving stuff they already have. A lot of the stuff is happening way mm -hmm. too late and is rather underwhelming in some cases. Yeah. So, quick uh, little look, look, look how professional I am, Paul. Look, so we got the iPad Pros back here. We got whatever. This is like the 11 inch and the, the bigger one now. Um, they call it they call it edge to edge, but it's not. Um, it's got the same bezel size as the iPhone XR, I believe. So it's tinier, but they're I mean they're still bezels. <laughs> That's the I just got it. <laughs> sorry sorry I'm still coming down a little here. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is about the same bezel size. Yeah. And then we've got the new MacBook Air, same name. Um, it, basically, kind of everything. There's nothing overwhelming about this Retina display. Similar. Well, no. I'll just say this. I, I, I kind of made fun of the bezel size on the mm -hmm. MacBook Air when I first saw it. Actually, looking at it now, I think that's perfectly acceptable. That's a The style of that device is nice. Yeah, it's um, fine. Um, people yeah, were a little, I, little enthusiastic about it, but it's it's fine. It's fine. It's got the colors. It's, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the keyboard's going to be a problem. They referred to it as a third-gen keyboard. Um, you know, we'll see. It's going to be loud. It's going to be, you know dusk dust uh averse whatever um retina display obviously great we had like two USB C ports like mm -hmm. i just pointed out you know in fact i have it here in front of me that the usb the um the hp elite book x360 which by the way transforms into a tablet and blah 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 whatever has is the same weight as the macbook air it has a real usb port over here mm -hmm. it has two usb c ports one of which i think is thunderbolt 3 if not both also, full-size HDMI out, you know? Yep. And I think this little thing here is a proprietary uh, Ethernet, you know, one of those little dongle deals. But whatever. This thing is 2.75 pounds. This is exactly the weight of that device. See, I, to me, it, I don't think 13 inch. size and weight is really a thing anymore. Oh, it, sorry. It, I, didn't, I didn't mention the pertinent fact. Full-speed quad-core eighth generation U-series processor in this device. Yeah, notice That's he didn't say the want. MacBook Air. He said that device that he's holding in the, in the Elite Book X three hundred and sixty. Paul, because also, remind me, what's in here? What 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 yeah. what what chips in here? So you can look as hard as you want on spec sheets on Apple's website. They don't tell you. It's, it's a dual core Y series, what we used to call a Core M processor. Um, the only way I could ever use this thing is if it had lots of RAM. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, the storage is fast. Apple usually does pretty well on that. Um, I configured one of these devices with 16 gigs of RAM, which is where I'd have to hit personally, mm -hmm. and uh, 256 gigs of storage. It's 1600 bucks. 1600 bucks. Yeah. And you might as well just buy a MacBook Pro. Yeah. I think we'll have more uh, ports, and it has a real chip. This thing starts at, for people who didn't watch the keynote or our blundering tweets, um, 1200 bucks. <laughs> And yeah. there's a there's a real good reason why it starts at twelve hundred dollars. Not because um, it probably needs to cost that much, but because Apple's new iPad Pros now is nine ninety nine for the bigger model, and that's kind of where well, they probably want you to buy. This thing is also, ob in case this isn't obvious, this is a thirteen inch version of an existing product called a MacBook. Right? Yep. The MacBook is a twelve inch product. I think it starts at nine ninety nine. 
Um, there was some hope that what they would do is maybe bring that product down to seven ninety nine or eight ninety nine, mm-hmm. and get the MacBook Air in at nine ninety nine because that's where it starts today, and has for a long time, or has started. I'm sorry, it, that was the historic price point for a long time. Yep. Um, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> e. you know, uh, yeah. So they didn't drop the price or change the existing MacBook at all, and they brought this in at two, actually three. No, two hundred dollars more. Right? Is it eleven ninety nine or twelve ninety nine? Uh, it's eleven ninety nine. Eleven ninety nine. So two hundred dollars. Twelve twelve hundred bucks is what you're paying. Yeah, uh, I, I tweeted this, but mm-hmm. uh, this is a fact. I I have been looking for something to replace my aging MacBook Air with for a long time. Um, I bought and returned a MacBook Pro earlier. It may have been, have been last year. I don't or this year or last year. I don't remember. It was just too expensive. I couldn't deal with it. And I always said though, you know. It, when they do this, even though I know the the keyboard's not going to be as good and blah 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 whatever, I will buy this thing sight unseen. And then I went and I configured it out. And I was like, I can't. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way I can spend money on this thing. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. I just. I, it makes me feel bad. I. I, uh, I I'm, I, some people misconstrue my tweets. I, they're really more good natured than I think a lot of people understand. But when I make fun of the Apple events, I, I find I have a big problem with the hubris thing at Apple. But yeah. Uh, they really do make good products, and right. I really have been looking forward to buying this thing. And I'm I'm honestly in a confused state right now because I I am not going to. There's no way I'm buying that. There's no way, not at that price. It, it's not cheap. Um, it really makes Microsoft's Surface Laptop two that starts at a thousand bucks look that much better, at least from a cross shop yeah. perspective. Um, I don't know if it was Mashable or TechCrunch, one of those idiot publications, said something like, oh, Surface Laptop 2 is the best laptop of 2018, which is a goofy thing to say because we're not at the end of the year yet and mm-hmm. there are new machines to come and blah, blah, whatever. Well, you know, maybe they were onto something because, <laughs> yeah, as you said, the MacBook, I'm sorry, the lap, yeah. Surface Laptop 2 is not just a better laptop. It's also significantly less expensive. And, it's- and you get more, more. stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, basically the idea is that if you want Mac OS, then you're, you know, that's your option. But um, if mm-hmm. you're open to switching operating systems, you're, you're going to get a better value out of the Surface, which isn't something we get to say it too often because usually they're we, pretty close on price point. Are we, are we describing something that is poly platform or what, what's the, what's the term for that? Like, um, open Polygamous? to another platform. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm platform curious. What, what's the <laughs> what's the term we're looking for here? I don't know. Just keep digging yourself into that hole. Uh, plat- platform. You do curious. have a nice way of just trailing off and letting me go on. You know. Yeah, because so- sometimes I have to cover that the eyes of the child <laughs> while you're talking. But um, let's see here. Speaking we- of which, I should I should publicly apologize for the comment I sent oh. to you via text message. <laughs> this is great. Just just to be clear. <laughs> I saw you see, he, Brad's tech. I got a text message yesterday. It's a picture of a purple unicorn or horse head or whatever the hell it was. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, okay, this obviously came from the iPhone. Hmm. Brad's sending me one of those stupid animated emoji con, whatever they're called. And I wrote to him, I think what I wrote was, You're going to hell. It's, no, that's exactly what you're right. Um, and then I tapped on it, and what it was was a birthday greeting from Brad's daughter. <laughs> And then I felt like a jerk. For those who, I doubt this will actually work, but you can probably hear it. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so and it response, went from uh, being the lamest thing you have ever sent me to being, oh, that was nice. My daughter wanted to say happy birthday, and I looked at her and said, Paul said you're going to hell. Um, I did I, not I, actually <laughs> tell her that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so these are the new iPads. They start at seven ninety nine for the eleven inch. The twelve point nine inch over here starts at nine ninety nine and tops out for nineteen hundred bucks. Nineteen hundred bucks. But uh, that's with that's without the keyboard, by yes, the way. I was gonna say nineteen hundred bucks for one terabyte storage plus cellular. So do the math here, by the way. Oh. You said nineteen hundred bucks for yep. the big one with LTE. Two hundred bucks for the keyboard. One twenty nine for the pencil. What You're looking that? like 2300 bucks when you toss yeah. in tax and everything else. Yeah, I have purchased cars for less money. Than <laughs> well, given the um, 
given the recent news of my vehicle yesterday, we were, I was just randomly looking at like leasing a Honda Accord or something. And yeah. the required down payment for a lease is in fact actually about 2,200 bucks. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. You're like, I can't bank the, I can't buy this car. I have to get an iPad. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Now, you can spend a lot less than that, but to what Paul and I were looking at right before the show, the, the key here is that Apple jacked up the price on all of the accessories. So the smart keyboard last time around, which was a smaller size, uh, was 159 Now, uh, right. for the 11-inch smaller size one, it is now 179 so 20 bucks more there. And if you want to buy the Big Daddy for this one up here, it's one ninety nine, and then the pencil is I think one twenty nine now versus one ninety nine. Hey, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, yep. I, I mean the, the it is more expensive to be an Apple fan. We've we joked about in the past Apple tax, but for a while it wasn't so bad. Um, but they've definitely yeah, come I, back I, full force here. Well, right, because you know I'm going to write about this today. I mean, so let me just screw up the editorial I'm about to write, but. The, the thing that you just pointed out is very important because in the past, Steve Jobs and other people from Apple have made the argument that, like, let's just talk about the Mac, for example. Mm-hmm. You know, they would say, well, yeah, sure. You know, the MacBook Air costs twelve ninety nine or whatever. Um, but our competitors sell these lower-end products that are crap. And we don't play in that market. We don't sell crap. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at the products they're selling that are actually directly competitive with ours, they cost about the same in some cases or even more. Flash forward to 2018, that product is crap. That has mm-hmm. a Y-series processor in it. That's crap. That, that has no business being in a product that sells for that much money. But when you compare it to Apple's previous products, it's also crap. They, they are, I, some, Rich Woods was talking about, you know, I want to see someone compare the core i5 processor in the five-year-old, or whatever it is, MacBook Air with this thing, mm-hmm. and would not be surprised, neither, nor would I, to find out that the old one actually performs better than the new one. But it, and it's not just the ports and the you know the price and it, it it's everything, or you compare the uh, the Mac uh, the iPad mm-hmm. Pro, the 10.5 inch version just came out a year ago. The the, the pencil was nine ninety nine bucks. It's one twenty nine now for some reason. The smart keyboard was, well, I think it was one fifty nine. It's one seventy nine now for some reason. Like they've jacked the prices up on everything. Yep. And, I, and in many cases, the thing you're paying more for now, like with the MacBook Air in particular, is not as good mm-hmm. as what you know as as the device was at the time compared to what else was in the market. Yeah, you know, the MacBook Air you know was revolutionary in in a, in a way when it first came out. It, people forget the first version was a piece of crap and it had a little flap down thing we could get at the USB port. It, it, the MacBook Air everyone knows and loves is not that device. But a year and a half later or whatever the time frame was, they released the one that we all. You know, the PC market has spent the last several years emulating, and Apple has spent the last several years not upgrading. Yep. You know, it was a big deal at the time. Uh, this thing they've released today with a compromised keyboard, two uh, USB ports on this, USB C ports. Uh, th- by the way, I, I, the Mac, the iPad Air, the, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, the iPad Air, <laughs> the iPad Pro doesn't have a headphone jack. Bow, chicka, wow, wow. Um, That's okay because you can use the lightning adapter. It works really well. Oh wait, <laughs> like what? Wow. Yeah. Yep. And they've switched to USB C, so you've got that too. So you've got dongle the dongle life. Do they even make a USB C to headphone adapter at Apple? I don't. Do they even make USB C headphones? Because the ones that come with the iPhone, obviously, are lightning. Or lightning, yeah, yeah. Apple doesn't, no. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe, well, maybe you can buy the like Google Pixel Buds will work. Uh... <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, then, uh, I bought a new phone so I could get the headphones. Yeah, no kidding. Here and then the other thing announced, which is gonna wash out my display here, is the black, or space gray, or black, whatever you want to call it, the new Mac Mini. Which I'm gonna yep. go now. Go off of it. Looks like just like the Mac Mini. Uh, starts at 7.99 for a 3.6 gigahertz quad core eighth gen Intel Core i3 processor. E. Um, I didn't realize that. Eight gig of RAM, and then it can go all the way up to you know your heart's content. I think you can actually max this thing out for about 4,200 bucks with 64 gigs of RAM and two and a half gigs of solid state storage. Yeah, that one's interesting to me. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I agree. can't. Or can't. I'm just gonna pull this over. Uh, well, you know the little Thunderbolt dock thing mm-hmm. uh, that I've been using with the laptop. 
um, it's modular, and so you can kind of you can plop on or take off a, an audio conferencing module that adds a speaker and microphones and some touch based controls. And I, I've always liked the the Mac Mini form factor, and I always thought it would be a cool modular PC that they mm-hmm. could do that kind of thing. Um, you know, have more space in there for storage and discrete graphics. You know, something like that. Um, I'm okay with the Mac Mini. I I, I think they've scaled yeah. it up to kind of a weird degree. Yep, and I think part of it is this uh, nonstop apology tour Apple's doing for the Mac Pro. Mm-hmm. But um, seven ninety nine for a Core i three is you know again it's the Apple tax. It, it, it's uh, you know whatever. But I've I, I've always I, I have I guess I have less problem with this than I do with the other products. Um, I've always liked the idea of the MacBook Mini, uh, the Mac Mini. The, the uh, interesting thing here is they they only offer two CPU options: an i three or an i seven. There is no i five. Hmm. So that's curious. Yeah, that's really curious. Why not just have I? I, okay. I, I don't make the rules. I just work <laughs> what's on their website. So, but I do agree. Of all the things announced, the Mac Mini is probably the most interesting because it seems to be not exuberantly priced like some of the other stuff. Well, are you in front of it now? Can you? What yeah. would a Core i seven with sixteen gigs of RAM? And you know whatever two fifty six uh, two fifty six you're looking at fifteen hundred bucks. Twelve fifty six really fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, but to get so to go from the Core i three to the i seven must be what four hundred bucks or three, something. Three hundred. It's three hundred bucks to go from that. Uh, two hundred bucks to double the RAM from eight to sixteen. Yep. And uh, two hundred bucks to act to go from one twenty eight yeah. to two. It's the same on the the laptop. It's two hundred bucks for the same upgrades each. You know. Yep. So you just described seven hundred dollars worth of upgrades. Yep, processor, storage, and RAM. Yeah, that's actually a lot of money. I mean, uh, seven ninety nine for a Core i five, eight gigs of RAM, and one twenty eight. Yeah, i three. I don't know. I still wish that they would have, um, I don't know, added a trackpad to that keyboard for the for the iPad Pro. Well, that would that would require um, a major update to the software, obviously, and to the platform. You know, and it would it, yeah. if when you think about um, what it is taking them to bring iPad apps to the Mac, they would have to essentially do that in reverse on the iPad. And I actually think it's kind of a bigger job. Um, I, I do agree that it's necessary, by the way. Um, but we would have seen hints of that, you know, in iOS mm-hmm. 12 uh, after WWDC. I mean. It, I don't. I do sort of feel like they ha- can't escape doing it. Yeah, um, I mean the way they're trending inevitable. it seems because they're obviously yeah. pl- placing that iPad Pro now as a low end laptop, which it candidly is with the multitasking support and the uh, the new smart cover that has two positions, which I'm guessing are 22 and 26 degrees, pioneered by the Surface RT2. Based on your experience with Surface devices, yeah, yeah. Um, the one thing the Surface has taught us is that a variable adjustable kickstand is a wonderful thing. Yep. And when you see products that don't have that, you know, that they build the kickstand into the uh, keyboard cover, perhaps like the Qualcomm mm-hmm. version of the X2, do, the MVX2 does, or they do what Apple's doing here and they offer just a couple of positions. Um, those are huge compromises. Yep. I mean, what you really want is the ability to arbitrarily decide what the angle is because it's not just what's comfortable for you when you're looking at it. You might be in a room typing on something, and there's a glare from over here. And if you just angle the screen, just half a crack, mm-hmm. uh, everything's fine. And this kind of thing is just—it's just too limiting. I'm yeah, sure the lapability is fine. Into it. <laughs> well, that, the, the top heavy nature of a tablet is, you know, obviously a problem as well. But I've, I, look, this thing could turn into a computer. We've just described everything it needs. Yep. Um, they, I feel—I really do think they're going to get there. But as is so often the case with me, I'm really surprised by how long it's taking. You mm-hmm. know, these things seem obvious to me. And I, I think they seem obvious to a lot of people. I, I bet they seem obvious to them. It's just they take their time and it's yeah. th- there's no rush on their end. They're, what if, if yeah. they do it with iOS 13, then... Right. I don't know why this keeps surprising me. I just... Yeah. I'm always surprised when it doesn't yeah, happen. I mean, this is coming from the guy who bought another Pixel and was upset that it was broken as well like his last Pixel. I just... That, that the one that's too far? <laughs> no, I, I accept your rebuke. I did. It's true. I admit my mistakes. I'm not happy about it. I'm not proud of this. Yeah. You know, How's your iPhone? Working great? It's good. I was going to play the... <laughs> Happy 
<laughs> oh, it just keeps looping. It's just I'm eventually just going to be banned from society. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all look forward to that day with big smiles and everything else. Yeah. All right, you got anything else for today, Paul? Mm, yeah. Oh well, my iPhone 10R is arriving today. Apparently, hmm. well, conveniently uh, so based timed. on yeah, yeah. Actually, right before, right as the event started, they sent me a text message and said you can click here to track it. And so I tapped on the link and uh, it went to the Apple Store, which told me we'll be back soon. Oh, <laughs> so, you <laughs> know, you not, apparently nothing on the store can work if they're holding an event, um, which is a little unsophisticated. But because I wasn't sure what it was, I thought it was coming, um, you know, Thursday or Friday. And uh, it's coming today. Anyway, as I told Brad before the show, I've decided I've, I've gone back and forth on the phone stuff a lot. I've mm. sent back everything. So the pixels have all been returned. The Samsung has been returned. Um, I do have a one plus six coming sometime this week, I believe, or soon. Uh, and then I'm going to but w whatever I do with the phone, I'm going to keep an iPhone around. I think one of the things I, I, I realized, you know, switching to Android is cute and everything, but I really need the ability to switch back and forth between the platforms because at different times of the year, you know, there are upgrades to the OS or whatever, mm -hmm. and I need to, you know, kind of keep on top of that stuff. So if the iPhone XR does not work out, I'll return it, um, yeah. and then I'll get an, uh, the XS again. I'll just buy that back. Cause it was a, it's a, as you know, it's a, it's an awesome phone. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'd like this one to work in a way, because I like the design of it. I like the colors. I what color did you get? Red. Okay. Uh, which I think is kind of a cool color. I think it's a little odd, by the way. Apple does not sell. Uh, any 10R cases of its own. You know, they make those beautiful leather and... Uh, oh, really? I don't know what the other ones are, the grippy polyurethane ones, whatever. Yeah, yeah they don't make a single case for the iPhone. I wonder if they're, they're just 10R. not out. They've, they've got to. I mean, that's going to be their volume seller. I would think so, but they don't. So hmm. that tells you a little bit about it. I, uh, I, I'm i going to make some comparisons with the iPhone 10R with the 10s, uh, for, with, I'm sorry, with the 5C from years ago uh, once I get it. But And I, I don't feel like they're completely com comparable, but there are some... Uh, there are some things to look at there, but it's a little weird. Like, you know, they're kind of treating it like a second class citizen in some ways. Um, I did order a third party case. Uh, you know, you have to have a case, but we'll see. Well, lovely. Yeah. What about you, Brad? What's, what else? Aside from bashing Apple all morning, what else you got going on? Um, well, we've got a webinar coming up on Petri this afternoon. You could join us, Paul. Oh, I'd love to, but um, yeah, I'm not going to do that. He's always, always so mad. <laughs> So no, actually, I'm doing the uh, what the tech later today. Yeah, yeah sure you are. Uh, so that takes up a sizable chunk of the afternoon, and then uh, yeah, that about wraps it up. So. All right. Enjoy. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for tuning in for today on this Apple edition. We'll probably have a hangover episode tomorrow, as we always do the day after. But uh, have yourselves a wonderful Tuesday, and we'll catch you right back here next time.